Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dose. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Magista Obra 2 in the latest Elite Pack colorway. Now included with the shoes inside the box is a string bag. The string bag is gray in color with Magista branding and Volt yellow on the front and black strings. And then of course you get the shoes themselves that I have right here in what is a very interesting colorway. Uh, of course, in today's video, we are going to be taking a closer look at the colorway itself, going over all the little details and stuff like that. We're gonna be talking tech specs, performance, taking a look at the weight of the shoe, as well as talking about how they fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more about this particular colorway of the Obra 2, please stick around, watch the entire video. If you are interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can check out the review page on my website you can get there by either clicking the first little pop-up on screen or the first link down below in the description of this video. And on that page, you will find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $300 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, click the little pop-up or the first link down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's take a closer look at the colorway. Now, of course, this is part of the Elite Pack. And generally, when you hear the word Elite from the brand Nike, uh, it means means that there's a difference in comparison to the regular variation of the shoe. If you're familiar with Nike's signature basketball line, they generally have a regular version and then an elite model that is kind of the same thing, but obviously there are some differences. In the case of this particular elite pack for soccer or football, whatever you want to call it, there's no difference at all, it's just a colorway. So just keep that in mind. The reason why it's called the Elite Pack is because Nike's having only 11 of their kind of main signature athletes wearing this particular colorway of whatever line that they currently wear. So it's kind of a cool idea. In theory, you're only gonna have 11 professional players contracted by Nike wearing this particular colorway. And the colorways themselves, in my opinion at least, actually look pretty good. So what you're getting with the Obra 2 is a variation of the following colors. Pure Platinum, Black, Hyper Turquoise, Wolf Gray, Cool Gray, and Ghost Green, as well as Volt Yellow, that's kind of an unlisted color. So um, the upper itself uh, is a kind of a pure platinum color. So if you guys uh, saw my video on the uh, Spark Brilliance Olympic Women's Pack Obra 2, that had a pure platinum upper. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing. So what you're getting is a really, really light gray for the majority of the upper, almost like an off-white, so it is a lighter color. Keep that in mind. Uh, the color actually ends up being pretty accurate on camera, so you get a pretty good idea of how it actually looks. Uh, but it definitely is a nice base for the shoe itself. And then, of course, being that it is an Obra, you do have this kind of color mapping pattern to it, uh, the weather mapping look. Uh, which is basically this hyper turquoise color towards the outside and then it eventually fades into what's supposed to be ghost green but definitely looks like more of a volt yellow color in my opinion nonetheless the colors actually work quite well together um, and it does have that nice amount of kind of uh, pop in terms of standing out against that pure platinum background so i like how it looks i know not everybody's a fan of volt yellow from nike but uh, they use it on pretty much all of their colorways so you're gonna have to get used to it uh, unfortunately. Nonetheless, you have a black Nike swoosh with what's supposed to be ghost green in the actual um, color that's listed on the box, but you can see that color versus the color in the laces, which is actually a ghost green, which is kind of like Volt Yellow, but slightly more muted, if that makes any sense. It's a little bit more of a dull color, not quite as vibrant. Uh, these aren't the same. That looks like Volt Yellow. This looks like ghost green to me. You can see moving into the back and collar area of the shoe, they introduce a darker shade of gray that looks really, really cool. Same with the fuse piece here where Magista is listed in black. And then of course, the sole plate, which has this kind of almost bluish pearlescent look to it, which I think is really, really nice. And then the studs, as you can see, are that hyper turquoise color, and then some of them are volt yellow as well. So that's pretty much it as far as the colorway itself is concerned. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the tech spec so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. As far as performance is concerned, I've been very, very impressed with the Magista Obra 2. I think that this shoe is a really good example of what Flyknit technology has developed into and how much freedom it allows a brand like Nike to actually play around with fit, feel, comfort, and just a lot of aspects of a shoe that you really wouldn't be able to 
uh, achieve with a standard synthetic material. It's a really, really interesting shoe that feels really good when you're actually wearing them. So in today's video, we're gonna go over the basic tech specs that you should know if you are interested in a pair of these. Uh, but if you guys do want uh, to see the shoes in action and kind of just get my general impressions of the overall performance, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen to my kind of first wear of the Obra 2. You get to see the shoes being worn, stuff like that. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, a little pop-up on screen, go ahead and check it out. Now with the Obra 2, what you're getting is a Flyknit upper, but the Flyknit is fairly unique in that it has a pretty heavy amount of texturing to it. And it's kind of difficult to see on this colorway. You can see when I hold it at this angle, you have what are basically these little bumps. It's a 3D texturing and it's not just texturing that's added to a flat material. The entire material has this texture inside and out. So when you actually put the shoe on, you can feel that there are certain parts of the upper that are actually raised off of your foot. Now the raised parts go as high as 4.5 uh, millimeters away from your foot. And then obviously the flat spots sit directly against your foot. And what this creates when you actually make contact with the ball is somewhat of a dampened effect because those flat, those raised spots actually flatten out when pressure is applied but you get that dampened effect similar to what perhaps a memory foam might achieve without taking away the ball feel. And you can see that they've added the texturing in kind of the two main zones on your foot that are gonna be making contact with the ball uh, pretty significantly. The, the medial side right here where you're gonna be controlling the ball, passing the ball, stuff like that. And then right here on the lateral side of the foot where again, you're gonna be doing a lot of dribbling and controlling the ball. So really, really interesting idea that feels extremely unique. It's difficult to compare this shoe to anything else at all even the previous Magista Obra. Um, it really just takes the concept of flying it, like I said, kind of to the next level. Uh, and it's just a really, really impressive shoe to wear. The thickness of the flying it upper uh, is not overly thick. There is a padded liner on the inside of the shoe, but for the most part, it does have kind of a thinner sensation. Uh, it's not what I would consider to be barefoot at all, but you get a relatively thin upper with that dampened effect because of the texturing. So they're adding padded, a padded feel to a certain extent without adding bulk to the shoe. Uh, it's kind of the easiest way to explain it, maybe a little bit difficult to understand. Uh, but once you actually wear them, you'll definitely get what I'm talking about. Um, the upper is covered in a Nike skin polyurethane material just to make sure that it's not left completely slick. Uh, because of how heavy the texturing is, there is somewhat of a kind of grippy aspect in terms of the touch on the ball. Um, not necessarily like a rubberized element, but the upper isn't completely slick either. ACC acts as your all, uh, all conditions control wet weather element, uh, something you're gonna get on all the top end models from Nike, but in my opinion, not a major feature at all. And then you do have flywire cable reinforcements running from the base of the sole into the lacing system in these straight lines, as you can see. So when you put them on, tie the laces tight, this cable system really does a good job of locking your foot in place and creating a secure, fairly responsive sensation in general. The laces are obviously slightly off-centered, being pushed ever so slightly to the medial side, but for the most part, they're pretty central, if I'm completely honest with you guys. Uh, the center part here, where the tongue would normally be, it's one piece of flyknit, but the flyknit transitions from being structured to elasticated, and that obviously extends into the uh, collar as well. So this is a stretchy material. A lot of people like the mid-cut aspect because of how it looks, and that's really the only I guess difference between a mid-cut shoe and a low-cut shoe, the fit in the heel on this particular model, it feels like a low-cut shoe. There's not a whole lot to get used to other than just the feel of the collar around your ankle, uh, but there's really no performance advantage here. It's not gonna provide any ankle support. It doesn't restrict your ankle in any way. Um, I guess there's a, a slight aspect of protection with a thin layer of material here. Uh, but like I said, there's no advantage to having a mid-cut shoe over a low-cut shoe from any brand uh, at the moment, but it is something that a lot of people like, and I like the implementation of the mid-cut aspect on the Obra 2. What's cool about this particular collar is as you guys can see, it's not just a perfect tube. It has a little bit of shape to it. So it kind of bulges out on both sides of the ankle, like an actual ankle bone. And then it's curved on the sides and kind of dips down at the front and back. So it just fits and feels and wraps your ankle, I guess a little bit more snug. And it feels slightly more natural as opposed to just kind of a tube of material wrapped around your ankle, which Again, I'm not knocking the other models from Nike because they don't have the same dimension, but I really like this implementation of a dynamic fit collar versus anything that they've done in the past or are currently doing outside of the Obra 2. Inside, there is a smooth 
uh, kind of synthetic suede lining material with a decent amount of padding that feels very comfortable pretty much out of the box, no heel slippage at all. The insole fully removable, it features a mesh liner on top and then it's uh, pretty much the same insole you're gonna find on the Tiempo Legend 6. It's this yellow foam with pour-on foam inserts in the heel and forefoot area. And then on the inside of the shoe, they've really thought of everything here. Uh, there are these, you can see those little black kind of uh, hexagons there or black little circles on the inside. That's actually a grip texturing applied underneath the insole on kind of the base of the actual sole plate itself. They put that in the heel as well as in the forefoot area. And that's basically just going to grip the insole a little bit so it's not going to slide around on the inside of the shoe. So really cool aspect, something that a lot of people wouldn't even notice if they own the shoes. Uh, but they, like I said, really did think of everything here with the Obra 2. And then moving on to the sole plate, it is a compressed nylon material, a lot more flexible than what we got from the Obra 1, but pretty similar in terms of just the feel on foot. Um, and then of course the stud pattern itself, uh, it's different in comparison to the previous Magista line. Uh, you can see the studs themselves are kind of like a half circle shape. Uh, it kind of goes back to what we saw from the uh, Maestri 3 in the CTR 360 line before it turned into the Magista line. But in all honesty, it's pretty much the same layout that we had uh, from Nike with the previous Magista line. It's very similar to the current Tiempo model. Uh, and the performance is not all that different in comparison to the previous generation Magistas. Uh, the idea here was to have kind of an emphasis on rotational movements and to a certain extent, I guess it is a little bit better for that particular thing. Uh, but honestly, it feels very similar to the previous one, just ever so slightly lower to the ground, perhaps a little bit more stable because of that. But all in all, as a firm ground stud pattern, it performs really well. Uh, nothing too fancy, nothing too aggressive, uh, but it gets the job done. And I don't really think too many people are gonna complain about what it has on offer from a performance standpoint. In terms of weight, the Obra 2 is relatively light, not quite as light as the Obra 1, but the difference is pretty minimal. For the sake of this video though, I'm gonna weigh them for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size 9.5 US. Gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 7.55 ounces the equivalent of 214 grams, which is about five or six grams less in comparison to something like the Phantom 2. Very, very minimal amount of weight, uh, but still, like I said, relatively light, still under the eight ounce mark, and not something that's gonna feel heavy on your feet by any means at all. All right, so here is a look at the Obra 2s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock ghost green laces that come with the shoes, and on my right foot, I have a pair of steel gray reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop up on screen, or you can click the link down below the description, and that'll take you directly to the website. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check it out. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they're very, very comfortable out of the box. I would say that out of all the mid-cut models from Nike, these take the least amount of time to get used to, mainly because of how they fit in the heel. All the other mid-cut models, whether it be a current model or a previous generation mid-cut shoe, they've had kind of a unique fit that just takes some getting used to. It's not necessarily a fault of the design, it just is different from a standard low-cut shoe. And because of how it wraps your heel, you just kind of have to take your time with it. With the Obra 2, in all honesty, it's a little bit different from a regular low-cut shoe, but it feels pretty close to kind of what you would expect from most other shoes. Pretty comfortable, no heel slippage, no chafing, no major discomfort. And for the most part, I'm able to wear this shoe out of the box with no major issues. Of course, if you do pick up a pair, I still recommend that you take your time with them, make sure that they're 100% comfortable before you go ahead and wear them straight into a game or something like that. Take your time with the break-in process and you shouldn't have too many issues because the shoe is, like I said, pretty comfortable out of the box. The upper is soft against your foot. It's flexible and it does have that sock-like sensation that you would expect from a fully knitted upper. As far as the width of the shoe is concerned, this definitely is the widest of the synthetic uh, models on offer from Nike. It's got some decent width, pretty much all the way through. Of course, with those flywire reinforcement cables, the midfoot and forefoot area isn't gonna stretch all that much. So for the most part, the way they fit out of the box is the way they're gonna fit for their entire lifespan. But like I said, these will fit most people as long as you don't have really, really wide feet. In terms of how these things fit when it comes to sizing, they run about a half size small, just like the previous Magista generation. So instead of wearing my usual size nine US, I bumped it up to a 9.5 and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going half size up 
in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the Nike Elite Pack Magista Obra 2. If you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can go ahead and check out the review page on my website by either clicking the I in the corner of the screen or clicking the very first link down below in the description of this video. And of course, on that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $300 retail price. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions at all regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, thanks for watching.